Billy Gunn Shower with me, Drew Derbyshire, and Josh McAllister. James again is on his jollies. Uh, I think he's doing a little bit of Christmas shopping. So we'll run through the latest stories, the latest gossip, the latest transfer talking in Rugby League over the next 45 minutes or so. I think it'll be a little bit of a shorter show today compared to what we normally do because it's Christmas and there's not there's not much happening in the in the rugby league world uh, at the minute all the super league clubs seem to be wrapping up the transfer business um the the latest news to to break today is that stuart cummings will not be on sky sports uh next year he's been appointed uh the well the match official manager or the head of match officials whatever you like to to call it at the international rugby league so he'll be stepping down from his role with uh, sky sports what are your thoughts on that? I know there's, a, there's been a lot of debate about Stuart Cummings and his role on Sky Sports, especially in the last couple of years. Um, on, his, on his coverage, I was never really a big... I never thought he, his input was that necessary, so I was never really a big fan, and I don't think many people would be disappointed uh, to hear that he's going. No, a fair play to him. Yeah, yeah. So I, you've I, got to credit him. I don't, I don't, I don't think... It was necessarily needed. Um, I know it, it on Sky Sports in football they have Dermot Gallagher, uh, who's a, an ex referee, but they are, they're bringing him in on a Monday morning and have the, their whole show with him. Uh, so they have like half an hour show with, with Dermot Gallagher reviewing out all the decisions uh, in the Premier League, uh, League weekend. I think that works much better, to be fair, than having a referee, well, an ex referee um, live on. Sky in each in each televised game. I think it works better having their, their own show when everything's died down as well. Like it, because it, if, if Richard Long sometimes uh, Richard Cum, uh, Stuart Cummings sometimes says <laughs> Richard Long's a photographer. I don't know why I'm saying Richard Long. Uh, if Stuart Cummings sometimes says that it's a try and then it turns out that the video yeah. referee doesn't give a try. It just looks a bit stupid and it, it makes the, the, the game look a, a little bit more complicated than, than what it actually is. Uh, but congrats to him uh, on, his, on his new role with uh, first the International Rugby League. Yeah, the, the, the first, first ever. ever. Uh, we've got a lot of content uh, on site regarding uh, the latest on Valencia and the Valencia double headers. Uh, the Valencia double headers, uh, James has reported that uh, it's fallen through the double header. I think the the, the friendly against Featherstone uh, will be going ahead, but the double header will not be. Obviously, there was a lot of talk uh, trying to get St Helens and Salford, obviously the the grand finalists from last year, uh, to play a friendly um, over in Valencia as well. But I don't think that will be going ahead anymore. That's in the latest off the record. Uh, and gossip column, so go and check that out. There's there's plenty more. Where, where's the next destination for Matty Smith? What's the uh, the latest on uh, Jackson Hastings as well? So make sure uh, you 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 click in in off the record and, and have a, a good read. There's plenty of juicy juicy uh, gossip. The Mike Bishop has extended his time with the London Scholars for for next year. We talked about Mike Smith as well last week, didn't we? So it's we been a whole week and he's still searching for a club. We have. And I, every day passes, I imagine it gets harder and harder to agree a, a good deal, especially a full time one. Well, yeah, we, we obviously we did speak about this last week. Matty Smith been has been released from his contract with Catalan with immediate effect. He had a, a year left to run, but now he's he's been released because obviously they, they've got James Maloney and Josh Drinkwater in the house. At the Dragons next season. Where's next for Matty Smith? Um, we did speak last week about potentially moving to Widnes. That could be a possible option because obviously they're they're on the lookout for an halfback. You would you will suspect because I think they've only got two uh, out and out halfbacks for next year. Um, so I think they'd probably like to bring one in. But it's whether Matty Smith would like to make this transition from full time to part time. If you look at all the full-time clubs uh, in England currently, or, or in the British game, should we say, um, and I can't think of any who want who'd want to start in halfback at this stage because a lot of clubs have already done the recruitment. We've just seen Ryan Brayler and Jimmy Ellis move to to Hull Car for next year, so uh, they won't be looking for halfbacks. Huddersfield have just signed Aidan Caesar. Uh, Catalans have already got those sorted. Jackson Hastings has gone to Wigan. Kevin Brown's gone to Salford. 
uh, who are part of Two Lower here in the half. So it's it, if you look at each sort of, club, yeah. the each club seem to be done in terms of uh, recruitment as far as the halves are concerned. So I really I, I I don't know where Matty Smith is going to end up. It's going to be interesting to see where he where his next destination is. I think I think a move to Witness would probably suit Matty Smith, but. Um, like, like we say, he's, he's a St. Helens boy, isn't he? So he's fairly local to the winners area, but uh, we'll just have to, to wait and see where, where he ends up. Um, he's 32. Could he just retire? Um, who knows? I don't, I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. Uh, well, let's just throw back Thursday. He's on the website now. We, we look at, back at when Adrian Morley was sent off after 12 seconds. What a start. What a start! What a start! Um, his very a first video. tackle when he was playing for Great Britain against Australia, twenty-two uh, eighteen. Australia ended up winning, so we, they only just won, and Great Britain played the game with seventy-nine minutes with twelve men. We didn't so. get any of that this year, did we? Mm. Uh, well, we didn't. We didn't get anything like it this year. We didn't. Even, we well, and we certainly didn't get, didn't get close to the uh, to the Aussies, did we? Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a there's a PDRL documentary featuring Adam Hills that uh, is going to be heard on Channel 4 at 11.30 on Friday night. Uh, that will be worth a watch. Um, I probably won't... St- oh, I might be busy on Friday night. It, it, it is quite late. It's, <laughs> it's about two hours past my bedtime. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll set it on record and watch it uh, over watch the weekend at some day. point. Oh, and Braden Willie Army, the latest transfer story. He's left Catalans with immediate effect. Uh, and we expect him to be joining an RL side, uh, St George of the Warrior Dragon. So he'll go from being one dragon to another I dragon. I like it. Uh, is that a good signing for for the dragons in the NRL? Uh, why not? Hey, eh? he was all right with the Catalan Dragons. I thought he was a good performer, strong player. Um, I think it was rumoured that he was joining twenty twenty one, was mm. it not? Uh, but obviously the sign has come about sooner. So obviously they see something in him. They want him in as quick as they can. Um, they've got some good centres. Uh, in the NRL, the Dragons, I think they've got a good full-back, uh, Matt Duffy there, he's got some pace, so I think it'll be tough competition, but why not? Mm. Yeah, I, I, I like him, seven-time Fiji international is Brennan with the Army, um, so yeah, I, I, I think he's, he's impressed me in Super League over the last couple of seasons, I think he's been one of the best centres uh, in the competition uh, since his arrival in 2017, I think he'll go well. Uh, in the NRL, he's a big he's a big unit, he's an it for for a centre. Um, he's got a good fend on him. I think it'd be a good good signing for St George of the Warrior. They, they relied on a few youngsters last year, St George. And I don't think they got anywhere near the top. Um, so I think it brings a bit of experience as well with him, just mm. to maybe help guide the, the youngsters who are you know talented youngsters. I can't remember a few of the names, but there's some good players there. But bringing that experience, I think, will definitely help them. And if you want us to to discuss anything at all today, any questions about any club. Uh, in any league, uh, we'll do our very best to answer them. If it's something on transfers, if it's something on where we think uh, a club will finish next season, how the club have recruited, just fire your questions in into us. Uh, I've got the comment section open, so we will see them. Uh, get your comments in, get your questions in. We'll do our best to answer them. Catalans forward, Mi- Mikhail Gudemond has been uh, ruled out for three months. He's had surgery on his finger, uh, I believe. Rochdale have made three more additions for the 2020 campaign. Josh, uh, do you want to explain a little bit about the signings for the Hornets? Uh, I think it's the Sheridan brothers and Sean Penkovic from Workington. I think Sean Penkovic is 37, 38. Um, so probably his last season, would you say, maybe. Uh, go out with a bang, maybe finish well with the Hornets. Over 350 career appearances. Um, so a good signing for the Hornets. You probably need that experience. And they relied uh, on... Well, I think they had a few loans last year. I think they had Isaac Farrell and Oscar Thomas from Swinton last year. So I think to have their own player that will start pre-season with them and work with them with that experience is uh, only good for them. And uh, Andy Menzi and his consortium are set to take over at Rochdale. A good appointment? Yeah, I believe um, it was a, a fairly good backing. I think maybe it was 100% backing uh, from what I read. So, you know, you saw what he did at Swinton. I think their attendance has improved. They finished high up in the finished ninth, I think it was in the league, uh, the best finish in twenty odd years. Uh, obviously that's a lot down to Stuart Little and the players that they brought in, but Andy Maisie obviously helps, he brings in good sponsorship, he knows people within the game, 
and he, he brings a lot of you know attention to a club and that's something that's always great, that, that bit of media attention, getting the club out there. So best of luck to him and, and I think it's three others that are joining him there, so best of luck to them. Uh, but, but when they were at Swinton and you, you mentioned that Swinton's attendance has increased and that's probably due to the media and marketing, do you think the Hornets will have to follow a similar route to, to a, a game? Higher attendances and increased attendances. Yeah, um, no media. Media and marketing is important. I think in any any sport, in any division. Um, so, but it, you know, they're, they're in a good place. Rochdale. They play in their hometown. Uh, Swinton, you know, we always have to think of Swinton playing Sale at Hayward Road. So it's it's trying to get people of Sale and Manchester to go and watch them. Or you know, the lost generations at Swinton that may maybe not make the travel to to Hayward Road. So Rochdale are in a good position that they're in Rochdale. I think they've got uh, a good foundation. Um, Link up, and uh, I think they possibly have a ladies team. Um, possibly, so I think they do have a ladies team. Oh, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Uh, so you know they've got good foundations there. So uh, you know, results help as well. I don't think they won. Did they win any games last season? I think I think they might have won one. Win one results help. That's uh, Winton as well off off the pitch on the pitch they were winning games and I think people want to always go see a winning side. They don't want to see the side lose every week, do they? So get the results on the pitch. You get your results off the pitch. And they play at Goose Stadium as well, the Crown Oil yeah, Arena, Spotlight they share Stadium. it with the uh, Rochdale Football Club. Yeah, they do. I think they had a bit of trouble, didn't they, last season. I think uh, the game against York was cancelled quite late on, uh, and there was some speculation there. But they've, again, good setup. So best of luck to them. You've worked with Andy Mazie as well, and the, the directors that will be moving to, to Rochdale. What, what, what was your, your working relationship like with them? Yeah, good. They were very open, very honest. Uh, as you know as well, Andy Mays is very open to the media, very honest. He's always up for speaking. He, he, you know, he, he likes the media, which is never a bad thing. Um, mm. So it'll bring a lot of publicity. They'll bring, I think they've got good links, you know, good business links. So they'll bring sponsorship, which obviously helps them with a bit of money, player recruitment. Uh, I think Hornets now, uh, they, don't, they used to train in Warrington, but now they train in Rochdale. Uh, I think they, tr they share a training facility with Toronto. I think that was announced in Hotwood Road. Oh, yeah. what college is it? Yeah, yeah, which looks like a good facility. So it's good the Rochdale are now also training in the hometown. So the Rochdale boys will be training at the same gym as Sonny Bill Williams? They will be, yeah. Maybe you'll have to get there, see if you can join them. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd, I'd welcome it to be fair, Josh. I don't think I could keep up with Sonny Bill, though. I think um, you can bench. Sonny Bill? Easy 150, wouldn't it? It'd be easy 150, easily. And that'd be for that'd be for a good six to eight reps, um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll we'll, we'll move we'll move off from Rochdale now. Sunny Bill, and Sunny Bill we'll, we'll stop on my own Sunny Bill. Um, the the Valencia double header just to, just to uh, put a little bit more light onto what we was on about before. The Valencia double header uh, has fallen through. Um, the hurricane hurricanes uh, set to follow up the friendly against Featherstone with a trip to face London Scholars. London Scholars are obviously doing it a little bit um, and going off the field. Uh, their marketing is going pretty well uh, from what I can I can see from the outside uh, ahead of the new season. Um, so, But Salford and St. Helens will definitely not be playing uh, as part of a double header with Valencia and Featherstone um, and they won't be playing at Levante football clubs uh, growing because obviously that's 26,000 capacity uh, it's just far too big for, for what the game uh, will bring in in terms of fans Hastings is not homesick Jackson Hastings is it, we, we expect him to be at Wigan in 2020 uh, reports that Jackson Hastings are homesick are wide of the mark uh, but speculation down under uh, is that he's unhappy with, the, with some certain terms of his Wigan contract it's interesting this I think um, he's reported to be on something believed to be in the region of £250,000 per season during his two, two year contract with Wigan um, but when you compare that to an NRL contract it's not that much <laughs> uh, no. not for what Jackson could get in the NRL but he's already signed the deal with Wigan how do you see this situation? Well, if you're a Wigan fan or any part of Wigan, you're thinking, please not again after what happened, you know, at the start of the season with the coach scenario. Um, you know, Jackson Hastings was great, not only for Salford, but for Super League. I think he's got to play in the Super League for another season. I don't like, like with the Super League, I think a lot of the NRL clubs have sort of their recruitment up to standards. They've, they've got the halfbacks in. So if he does leave Wigan, then where does that leave him? 
Um, I can't I can't see many NRL clubs. Maybe you might sign for an NRL club like Matt Frawley did, but not play in the first team. I think Matt Frawley will be, you know, in, in the build in the reserves, uh, playing in the um, divisions below. Um, but you know, let's hope he comes back to Wigan. He's good for the sport, isn't he? He's good for Super League. The amount of potential he brought to the Super League. Yeah, I I I think he'll be on. Um It'll be on Wigan's books in 2020. It'll be interesting to see what happens the season afterwards, though, because there's a clause in his contract where by he can go to the NRL after a season with Wigan. Well, so it's going to be interesting. There's his motivation, isn't it? Win, win, win something with Wigan, mm. and NRL club's going to pick him up. Certainly, certainly. Uh, yeah, I, I think that'll probably be the best option for him. Another another season in Super League, another impressive year personally for him. Uh, target the Man of Steel award again, um, but obviously target. Uh, a Challenge Cup or Super yeah, League with, title, with yeah. Wigan. Um, I think that it, it was interesting to see that we, he was wearing a Toronto Wolf pack yeah, uh, cap on his Instagram, Instagram post as well. Who knows? That'd be a good lineup. Robert Lewis apparently unsettled at Leeds. What What do we think of that? He he obviously only moved to Leeds from Salford uh, mid season last what, what year. Do you think he's well? He's moved from a club that made it to the Super League Grand Final. So you've got to be something. He's got to have some sort of feeling there, thinking that why have I done this? I, maybe he he probably got a little bit more money at Leeds, um, but he's missed out on a Super League grand final spot possibly. Uh, maybe obviously they might not have made it if he was in the team or things different. You never know. Um, but where, again, if he leaves Leeds, as we were talking with Matt Smith, where do you go from there? It's all the half back positions. Yeah. And I don't think Leeds. If he leaves Leeds, does that leave a space for Matt Smith? Mm. Uh, are you opening a can of worms there, Josh? Are you, are you, are you, are you starting a rumour already? Uh, Toby Jones says, can we expect any more signings uh, from Toronto with their lack of depth? Also expectations for Latrell Mitchell and Tony Usual. Uh, well, Latrell Mitchell will stay in the NRL. Um, yeah. I, ca- I cannot see him moving to Toronto whatsoever. I think that's just the agent talk. I think that's... Uh, I don't think there's anything in that speculation whatsoever. Um, I'd, I'd be absolutely staggered if uh, Latrell Mitchell ends up in uh, yeah, Toronto or Jersey uh, next year or the year after. Uh, I just can't see it whatsoever. Uh, the I think I think he was originally offered eight hundred thousand by the Roosters to extend his. Uh, well, he was he was offered an eight hundred thousand pound contract by the Roosters. Uh, to extend his contract there and originally he turned it down um, because he wanted a million pound contract uh, and then obviously all that went on and the Roosters threatened to play him in the reserve grade um, and then he, he was speaking to the uh, West Tigers to the Cadbury Bulldogs um, and, and, and they've not really shown any real interest in Mitchell I think probably because of the price tag I think everyone's interested in Latrell Mitchell but uh, obviously, that it comes with a, a heavy price, um, and now Latrell Mitchell has posted on Instagram saying, "Take me back" as a plea to the Roosters. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I think he'll end up staying at the Roosters for a couple. Uh, well, he's already he's, under, he's, he's already under contract with the Roosters for next season. Yeah. Uh, and then I think it, all this speculation will, will blow over. He'll have a, a good couple of months with the Roosters in the NRL, and, and both parties will, will just see fit and. I think they'll just end up yeah, I, think on on I, think I, I, just, I just think because he's been at the Roosters all his career all his junior career I think I always just pictured Latrell Mitchell being a one club man so I, I can only really see him play for the Roosters for the rest it would be weird seeing him in a Tigers or a Bulldogs jersey but uh, Tigers finish outside the top eight last season as well so as a player do you think do you want to go from winners to outside top eight obviously your motivation mm-hmm. to get them inside top eight but yeah but money talks as well it because you, you are, you're also going to do right by your family um, and set them set them up for, for life possibly as well. Uh, regarding Tony Gijo, talks gone very, very quiet on Tony Gijo. Um, he's not been linked with any rugby league clubs whatsoever. Could he return to Catalans now Braden William is gone? But I, then again, I can't see him playing in the centres. Um, but yeah, to talk of him to any Super League club has gone pretty quiet I can't see him going to Toronto uh, yeah and he, he was linked with Rugby Union for a, for a little while earlier on in the off season but Torch gone completely quiet on 
on Gijo. Um A lot of squads are releasing the numbers as well now, aren't mm. they? So uh, to me, it says that they've completed. And obviously, obviously Gijo will want to be a starter. He's, yeah. he's not going to want to be a squad player. He will want to start for for someone. And I don't think any Super League clubs could could guarantee him a starting role because every all the Super League clubs know they're starting to announce the squad numbers and, and starting to get the, the starting 13, starting 17 ready uh, for the 2020 season. So it's, it, I think it's just going to be, it's, it's, it's a strange story with Tony Gijo and the way he left Cathon, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see where he ends up because uh, Tart's gone very quiet with him uh, over a moving Super League. He was linked with the NRL for a little bit, but I don't think he'll, be, he'll, he'll get in a starting jersey anywhere in the NRL so uh, it's interesting that's for, that's for sure Josh Beckett says Drew uses plastic straws pass it on <laughs> I don't use plastic yeah, straws it doesn't. I don't use plastic straws whatsoever it's yeah. all about the metal straws he uses plastic bottles but he doesn't use plastic straws so all, all the, all the plas- plastic bottles sometimes when my big bottle runs out but he uh, doesn't use plastic straws do you? Uh, no, no, no chance to use plastic, plastic straws because obviously he's not seen that video yesterday so Drew doesn't use plastic plastic straws pass it on yeah, there you go. I don't use plastic straws. All about sits, keeping the environment clean, isn't it, Josh? But we're, we're all we're all saving the environment here at Love Rugby League. <laughs> um, and and, the, and another interesting transfer story, Josh. Uh, the Seagulls m- making a potential swoop for South Red Devils hooker. Joe will see what what are your thoughts on that? Another one. A very, very good hooker in Super League. He is a very good hooker. Uh, very good hooker. Again, I think he was lacking opportunities when he when he left the NRL to come back up, come to Super League. Um, again, like Jackson Aces, it depends on him. It depends where he sees himself. Does he see himself starting in an NRL team? Mm. Uh, if the CEO goes want him and, and they say to him, look, you're going to start for us, here's some, some good money. Uh, I imagine he's on all right at Salford as uh, one of the good players there. Um, be a good signer for Seagulls. Uh, I haven't quite looked at their squad. Uh, I don't know if they've still got a few hookers. Uh, they had Happy Carousel, I think. Um, so Fijian International. Yeah. So maybe you know between them two, they can work out something in that starting hooker spot. Well, obviously he played one one game for for Manly's first team before he came to yeah. to Salford in 2018. Um, so, and, but obviously he only played one game for the Seagulls first grade. He, he mainly played reserve grade for for the Seagulls, and it was kind of a a, a master stroke of a signing really from from Ian Watson and Salford because I think he's he's one of the best hookers in Super League. Um, he was unbelievable in twenty nineteen. Gets through a lot of work, but he also ramps up the attack. He has a lot of zip when he comes on. I, yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a big fan. Coventry will return to the Bucks Park Arena for twenty twenty as well. Obviously, they spent a little bit of time uh, on the road uh, last season because at the Bucks Park Arena, a new artificial turf has been laid down. So. Uh, good luck to the birds for 2020. And a little bit of sad news as well uh, earlier on this week. Featherstone women's player uh, Natalie Harrowell uh, has passed away at age 29. Very sad day. And you could you, you, you felt that the morning that when the news were announced on, on social media, everyone was pretty struck by it. Because 29 is no way. Yeah, yeah, very young age. You saw the you know, rugby league community, I think. As a big centre for relief family, and I, you saw them all come together on social media and the clubs come together and send the best wishes. Uh, yeah, very sad news. We were, uh, our thoughts are with uh, Natalie's family at this time. Um, moving on, Hull KI youngster Adam Rooks has joined Bradford on a season long loan. Uh, made a couple of appearances for the Robins uh, in Super League last season. Uh, an interesting piece from James Gordon on, on the website earlier this week. More clubs are interested in joining League One uh, for 2021. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about Ottawa at the minute and New York joining uh, the RFL pyramid. Uh, but uh, obviously, Valencia have shown interest in joining League One. And obviously, we, we've, had, we've heard rumours of a team from Dublin uh, also joining. Is that a good thing for, for League One or, or a bad thing, would you say? Uh, it, it, it can't be a bad thing. I think the more teams that want to play professionally in our sport, in our league, the better. Uh, I don't know logistically how it would work out with home and away games. We saw how Toronto did it. They played six months here, six months there, took games on the road. Um, but, you know, uh, the more we can expand the game, 
the, the better it is, the more fans, the more sponsorship, the more publicity, the more maybe broadcast deals you can you can gain. Uh, so, you know, I'm all for expanding the game, I think. It's just got to be logistically. Yeah. Uh, we, we've also got to start how Wimbledon's squad looks for 2020. Yeah. Uh, so, Wimbledon's have got 23, uh, 21 players registered uh, for the 2020 season so far. Uh, I, pro- I think they'd probably make, they'd like to make a couple of signs before the start of next season because that team seems a, lo- a little bit light at the minute. This is our starting match day 17 uh, the, of what we've created so far for Witness. At, at full back, we've got Jack Owens, uh, Jack Johnson, and Jaden Hatton on the wings, Dion Cross and Jake Spedding in the centres. In the halves, we've got Danny Craven and Joel Lyons, Jay Chapo and Pat Moran starting at, at prop with Logan Tompkins at nine. Shane Grady, Sam Wild, and Kenny Baker finish off the starting 13. All we found were Ted Chappell out, McGrath Lulai, and Jacob Dugdale are on the bench. What do you make of that side, that Viking side for Good squad, Jack. For the first yeah. uh, season as a part time? Yeah, Jack Owens at full back. I think they've, they've done well to keep some of the players I have. Jack Owens at full back, uh, Danny Craven and Joe Lyons partnership. Uh, going forward, depends obviously. With your speculation of where Mike Smith could end up, but I think that's Logan Tonkins, uh, Super League grand finalist, he'll bring in a lot of experience. Um, he's got a, a good head on him. Uh, obviously, he played at Wigan, um, so he's going to be, you know, he, what makes good head? Uh, <laughs> he put me on the spot here. <laughs> experience, I guess. You know what I mean. Um, so I think he think he would have been good for anyone in the championship. So I think he'll bring a lot to witness. I think that's a, a, a decent. I think we had some a comment last week saying witness were top five, didn't we? Um, they could be pushing for it again. I wouldn't be surprised if they finish in top five, and again, I wouldn't be fin- surprised if they finish outside the top five. I don't really know what to expect from the Vikings next season under Tim Sheens because obviously he's got a lot of experience as well. Do you, do you tip the Vikings to finish in the top five? Or not? No, last week we talked about it, didn't we? And I had I'll put him, <laughs> I'll put him six. And then on, on the reserves, pushing for spots, we've got Owen Buckley, Lloyd Robey, Lynn Cooper, and uh, the recent, the latest signing, uh, Connor Dwyer, who's yeah, to the next line. Yeah, I think he went from soon the Lions. I think he left from the Lions due to work commitments. Played at Thatso Heath, who obviously went on a good challenge cup run last year. Oh, he was knocked out by Jewsby Rams. Um, he was in the start of the Crusader Park. Park. Yeah, um, so it was a good signing. Yeah, we're seeing, a, we're seeing a quite a few. Amateur signings in the championship this year. That's a week. Do you think that's the way to go, or do you think that's a bad thing for the amateur game? Uh, well, again, uh, being at Swinton and seeing it work there, Matty Smith, uh, Matty Smith, uh, Matty Ashton, sorry. Uh, Matty Smith's never been at <laughs> Matty Ashton, he came for the amateur game. He used to game. be on uh, Everton's uh, uh, book. He did, yeah, yeah, thanks for that one. Uh, Matty <laughs> Ashton. <laughs> came from the amateur game. Uh, he was a Rochdale Mayfield product. Uh, I think he spent a year in Australia. And now look at him. He's in Warrington. He's got a Warrington squad number. Uh, so I think that he's full back. Ben Hayes. He went to Swinton. I think you know you've got to dig into the amateur game. That's people, that's why people play top end amateur rugby to hope to make it one day. So it's good that they're getting the chance and hopefully they can take it like my Ashton did. You're at Swinton, Josh. Where do you see the Lions finishing in? In 2020 in the, the championship. Put me on the spot. Um, Stuart Little did a fantastic job last year. As, as I say, they finished ninth. They've made some good signs. Uh, Jack Hansen, Bob Fairclough had a really good partnership. They've got a really good relationship off the field. I think that every Swindon fan knows they've got quite a bit of a bromance going on off the field, um, which helps on the field when you play together. Uh, they've got youngsters uh, like Ben Hayes from Thato Heath coming in, who plays full back. So it'll be interesting to see who gets the number one role. Uh, Oscar Thomas, who spent you know um, last season sort of on loan at Rochdale, but maybe he'll come back with the point to prove and what a starting spot at Swinton. They've got a good squad under Stuart Littler and Wales International Rodri Lloyd. Wales International Rodri Lloyd, who uh, I think he liked one of this this video a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so they've got him leading the way as captain. Luke Waterworth at hooker. I think they'll be all right again. I think they'll be all right. Uh, yeah, I, I think they will. Uh, I like Swinton. I do. You've been to the ground. I do. I have, yeah. I have, I've been, 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 I've
Wakefield have revealed the score numbers for 2020. Uh, we'll, we'll just run through them quickly. One, Alex Walker. Two, Tom Johnston. Three, Bill Tupu. Four, Reed Lynn. Five, Ben Jones Bishop. Six, Jacob Miller. Seven, Danny Brook. Eight, David Fafita. Nine, Carl Wood. Ten, Tinerau Arona. Uh, Eleven, Matty Ashurst. Twelve, Danny Kermond. Thirteen, Joe Westerman. Fourteen, Jay Pitt. Fifteen, Craig Kopchak. Sixteen, James Bachelor. Seventeen, uh, Chris Green. 18, Adam Tengata, 19, John Crowther, 20, Joe Arundel, 21, Max Joe, 22, George King, 23, Josh Wood, 24, Jack Croft, 25, Brad Walker, 26, Titus Guaze, 27, uh, Lee Kershaw, 28, Ryan Atkins, 29, Ryan Hampshire, 30, Yusuf Aydin, 31, Connor Bailey, 32, Ollie Greensmith, and 36, Kalepi Tanganoa. What do you make of that squad? I'll, I'm going to go back on my word. I think last week I said that them or Hull KR to struggle next year, but looking at that squad, uh, I think they'll be all right. I think I'm just going to just stick to the one team, and, and I think Hull KR are the team that are going to struggle next year because I like that squad. Miller, Bruff in the halves. You've got you spoiled, good choice at full back with Walker and Hampshire. Interesting to see he'll start there. Obviously, Ryan Hampshire uh, contract negotiations fell through, and then he went back to Wakefield, so it'll be interesting to see that. You've got uh, Atkins, a very experienced centre. Uh, who's not got a first first shirt? Um, so you know, I think they'll be all right again next season. I'll take my word back. I don't think they'll struggle at all. And Jamaica international Ben Jones Bishop on the wing, Tom Johnston uh, yeah. on the other wing it, as well. It's always good when he's back. To, he's to struggled be, with injuries, but when he's playing, he's good. He's one of the best wingers. Yeah. In the game. To, to be fair, when you look at Wakefield's back line, Alex Walker, very good season at London last year. Scotland international. Top Tom Johnson and Ben Jones Bishop on the wings. Bill Tupper and Reece Lane in the centre. You, you can't really complain with that, can you? Know, as long as the forwards, if, if, if the forwards perform and the backs, if the forwards do the hard work and the backs can put on a bit of magic, then they'll, they'll finish all right. I think I think they've they've gone for a lot of depth as well, haven't they? Yeah. This like year because it, because when you, when you look at the later numbers, uh, the likes of Jay Pitts at fourteen, Craig Copshack fifteen, James Bachelor uh, sixteen, seventeen, Chris Green eighteen, Adam Tengata, uh, twenty two, George King twenty three, Josh Wood, um, twenty eight, Ryan Atkins twenty nine, Ryan Hampshire. So when you look at the later squad numbers, they're all kind of first team plays as well so you've got a lot of strength in depth yeah a lot of strength in, in, in depth and that will only be a benefit for them pre-season because I imagine everyone will be pushing for a place so lots of competition is always good in a squad as you said at Wigan you know there's loads of competition there and loads of youngsters have come through and they've performed and they've played well so competition is always a good thing um, so yeah they're in a good place for next season can we make the top five I'm not going to go that back on my word because last week I said oh. they'll struggle so I'm not going to say they're going to finish top five but I think they'll finish mid table with a squad like that uh, Canberra Raiders have confirmed the signing of Matt Frawley uh, from Huddersfield uh, on a one-year contract. Um, he must have a good agent, I'll say that much. Uh, well, former London Broncos halfback uh, Brock Lamb has signed for the Parramatta Eels. I think two, two players I don't think that will quite make first-team appearances next year, or if any, or if many, sorry, uh, maybe one or two. Um, but, you know, they want to test themselves in the best competition so fair play to him as you say Matt Frawley you're not a fan I'm not, Frawley, I'm not, you know? well I'm, I'm not going to lie I, I, they, they've both got gigs with NRL clubs and I don't think they get into many Super League really starting half backs to be honest um, Matt Frawley wasn't I didn't have the best season on the pitch did he for this field yeah know. because obviously there was talk of Matt Frawley going to Halifax for a season on loan so yeah so I, it's I, a big yeah, it's a, a bit of a difference isn't I, it? I, I, hope, I hope they can su surprise me and and make a couple of appearances or whatever, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I was personally surprised with both of the, the, the signing announcements earlier this week. Our latest uh, mailbox is out now. The, this is the, the fans' voice. Um, the fans can have their say on whatever they, 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 they'd like to uh, in rugby league, really. The latest mailbox is saying it turned Great Britain into an under 23s team. Combining it with the, the Welsh, the Irish, the Scottish, and the English, what do you make of, it, of that suggestion? Is that as well as a? Is that instead of a first? A, a, instead, a, a instead first of a team, first say. team, Great Britain. Well, and, develop, and then, and then, the and then obviously you can have the, the individual home nations. So you can have England, Ireland, Scotland, yeah. Wales, first teams, and then have a Just collective under twenty threes as Great Britain. It's developing the youth, isn't it? Um, I don't think it's anything we'll ever see, though. Sadly, uh, nice idea, though. I don't think we'll ever see it. Do you think it's a nice idea? 
Would you go ahead with it, Josh? Um, Come on. <laughs> it's a nice idea, isn't it? I can't, I can't see it ever going ahead. It's nice to develop the, the youth and, and see some stars coming through. There's a load of talented players that win a 23 in the Super League. Um, but if you can't make the first team make it, then I don't think we could, you should then sack off the first team and just make an under 23. So I can't see it happening. So. All right. So Josh has already said, no, I can't, I can't see it happening either. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think it great. should be. I think it should be the the pin, the absolute pinnacle of the sport. Yeah. And I don't think it, I don't think it should be uh, downgraded because I think that's what it would be if it if it did come into fruition. Hulk Yard have announced their 2020 squad numbers. Yep. Yeah, Sean Kenny down. Uh, like that for me. Yeah. Sean Kenny down number three. We'll we'll look, run through them like we did with Wakefield. Um, one Adam Quinlan, two Ben Ben Crooks, three Sean Kenny Dowell, four Kane Lennart, five Greg Minikin. Uh, six is retired in honour of Roger Millward, cl- uh, Millward club legend. Uh, seven, Jordan Abdul, new signing. Uh, eight, Ro- Robbie Mulhern. Nine, Matt Parcell. Ten, Mossy Massor. Eleven, Will Araki. Twelve, Harvey Levet. Thirteen, Dean Hadley. Fourteen, Mitch Garber. Fifteen, George Lawler. Sixteen, Dan Murray. Seventeen, Carl Troy. Eighteen, Jeff Litton. Nineteen, Will Dagger. Twenty, Mikey Lewis. Twenty-one, away, Owen Harrison. Twenty-two, Nick Rawstone. 23, Ethan Ryan, 24, Joe Keys, 25, Matty G, uh, 26, Wilmar, 27, Elliot Minchella, 28, Matty Stoughton, 29, Anissi Mudoti, M- are we going for? Uh, he came from Bradford earlier earlier on in the off-season, one of the five <laughs> signings, for, uh, five or six signings from Bradford, uh, 30, Jamie Ellis, 31, Brian Briley. I wrote here... Um, quantity over quality. Um, they've got a very big squad there. I don't know if there's any if there's much leadership there. Some talented individuals. Be interested to see how they play as a team. Um, they've got a choice between the Jordan Abdul, Jamie Ellis, Ryan Brealy as your halfbacks. Uh, but I, again, I think they've got quality. Quantity over quality. So he's not quality though, then, Josh. Put me under pressure here today, Jay, aren't we? <laughs> They're all good players, obviously. I, I, I'm, not playing, I'm not playing Super League, so I don't like to go, oh, he's not, he's not great. I just think, in term, when you compare it to other Super League squads, the starting 17 isn't as strong as others. And I think, while wow, they've, brought, they've brought in you know, a few youngsters, they've brought in a few players, I just don't, can't see it being a, a, a brilliant side for next season. I mean, what, what's your opinion, Jay? Let's, let me put you under pressure for a minute, go on. I'm the horse, I only ask the questions, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 okay. no, no, I said it, I said it last week, Josh. Uh, I think Hulkia uh, will be relegated in 2020. I, ju- I just think the, their squad isn't as good as the, the teams that are, are around them. Uh, I think compared it to Huddersfield, I think Huddersfield have got a stronger squad on paper. Uh, compared it to Hull FC, the rivals, Hull FC is far stronger. Full into uh, Wakefield, we've just been through Wakefield squad numbers. I think Wakefield have got a, a much stronger side than Hull. Yeah, I, I changed my mind. I have to look at the squad. So um, who else will be will be around? That? Salford. So I think Salford have got far stronger squad. Um, Catalans have got far stronger squad. Toronto, I I believe have got a stronger squad. So it's 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 like a, it's like a no. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's like a no-brainer for me to put Hulk out at the bottom of my predictions for for 2020 because I just think that they're just far out. I, I just, I, I can't, I'll be surprised if they stay I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'll be, su- I'll, I'll be surprised uh, if they avoided relegation. We've got a lot of top five and six tackle features as well on rugbyleague.com so make sure you check them out. We've got top five try scorers, we've got... Uh, yeah. The assist king is going out later Top six today. wingers, didn't you? Top six wingers. Who's your top winger, number one? It's going to be Tommy Makinson, hasn't it? It, it can't be anyone else. Top uh, try scorer, wasn't he? Absolute freak of a rugby league player. I think he was um, a top meter maker as well last year. Yeah, two Welshmen are in it as well. Two Welshmen, Regan Grace and Rhys Williams of London. Two to be at Salford. Well, is it Salford now? Preseason in training with the Red Devils. We had a debate yesterday because I just briefly mentioned in Jermaine McGillivray, despite Huddersfield, I think we finished uh, 10th last season. I think he, he finished 7th in the top try scorer list. So, top 10 for a team that finished 10th. I think individually that's an okay season, but 
it was hard to put him in your top six, wasn't it, because of the season that Huddersfield had? Yeah. But he, he still went to me six. Oh, did he? He did. Oh, I haven't read it, have I? He did. He did read <laughs> you, you must have read it, Josh, he was, he was still in my top six. There you go then. Feminist in 2020 squad numbers, Josh reads the site. <laughs> Uh, Craig Alter wore the number one shirt at Featherstone next season. Two, Blen- Ben Blackmore. Three, Josh Hardcastle. Four, Thomas Mins. Five, Connor Curry. Six, Louis Jouffre. Seven, Dan Chisholm. Eight, Dale Ferguson. Nine, Dean Barata. Sure Ten, J- James Harrison. Eleven, Brett Ferris. Twelve, Brad Day. Thirteen, James Lockwood. Fourteen, John Davis. Fifteen, Luke Cooper. Sixteen, Jack Wilson. Seventeen, Alex Cassino, uh, Italian international. Eighteen, Jimmy Beckett. Nineteen, Jack Render. Twenty, Jack, uh, Jake Sweeting. Twenty-one, Dakota Wilder. Twenty-two, uh, Brandon French. Twenty-three, Bradley Wright. Twenty-four, Sam Ortwell. Uh, Twenty-five, Nathan Wright. Uh, Twenty-six, Jack Richardson. And twenty-seven, uh, Greg Worthington, who's joined the club on, I think it's like, like a nine match long it, it? from, from Toronto, okay. which is pretty, sh- <laughs> pretty strange. That's a top four side, isn't it, in the championship? Top five, I'd say. So you're putting him fifth? Maybe. <laughs> you're saying that? Maybe. I'd maybe put him third. I, 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 put them, I put them in the top five. I don't, I, I, I'm not getting into the, the whole ranking. I said top order. four, you said top five, so I think that says it for him too. Um, I reckon they're the top five side. Uh, <laughs> Lumet Juma has committed himself to the London Scholars um, an interesting one that broke out on Monday morning um, Huddersfield are going to combine their, their reserve team with Hunslet and Halifax uh, next season that will come under the, the Giants branding they'll play in Giants kits they'll, but obviously they'll also play um, at the Shea at South Lee Stadium as well uh, so what will happen it'll, it'll be a bulk of Huddersfield players, fringe players, academy players, and then the players who don't play for, for Hunslet or Halifax on, on that weekend, they'll join the Huddersfield team, they'll combine that team and play each well, each each time they, they, they play a reserve game. Uh, what are your thoughts it's, on It's better that it, when you're at Halifax and you know you're on the fringe, it's better to know that you're going to play a game than play no game at all. I think as a professional player, there's probably nothing worse than knowing you're not going to play this week because your team isn't involved in the reserve squad. Uh, it could just make make way for the future. Maybe you could see sort of a Manchester area combination uh, of teams around there. Well, that, that, that's, it, that's interesting together. though because the Manchester proposal was rejected, was turned down by the RFL. Which really is no different to this one, really. Is exactly. It, so. or, or is it not yours, you know? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. Don't, I don't want all, all flat cappers on my case. Um, We've got the latest star on diet on Luke Thompson, the Great Britain St. Helens prop, talks having five meals a day, up to having five meals a day, uh, which is mental. Like, mental, you, I, I, I eat a lot. You can probably tell I eat a lot, but I don't eat five meals a day. That's a lot of work. Um, so check that out in partnership with Heaven you, and you, you did eat quite a lot of meals for a day with your diet, did you not, with Heaven and Health? I did. Uh, when, when I was, when I, yeah, yeah, and then I, I was on the bulk as well. So when I was trying to put on muscle, um, I was eating three or four meal, four meals, and I was snacking in between. So I probably, I probably you, you did. You were sat in the office, and you were, you were thinking, "Oh, I've got to eat again." It's only been an hour, two hours since you last yeah. got here. So yeah, no, no, it was, how he does it daily. That, so. that was a difficult period. That I tell you, that was that was hard work trying to trying to fit all the meals in. But thanks to our partners at Heaven and Hell. For the meal preps. Uh, Leeds have also announced the score numbers. There's been a lot of score number announcements this week, and, and there'll probably be only more to come in the coming weeks. Leeds Rhinos score numbers 2020. Uh, Luke Gale probably the highlight being uh, at number seven. Jack Walker number one, two uh, Tom Briscoe, three Harry Newman, four Conrad Hurrell, uh, five Ash Hanley, six Rob Lewis, seven Luke Gale, uh, eight Arbor, seven Manu Fangai. 9 Cruz Leeming, 10 Matt Pryor, uh, 11 Alex Meller, 12 Reese Martin, 13 Steve Wall, 14 Brad Dwyer, 15 Liam Sutcliffe, 16 Richard Myler, 17 Adam Cuthbertson, 18 Don Crosby, 19 Mikolai Lesky, no 20, no 21 uh, yet, uh, 22 Cameron Smith, 23 Colin McClelland, 24 Luke Briscoe, 25 James Donaldson, 26 Alex Sutcliffe, 27 Sam Walters, 28 
Tom Holroyd, 29. Corey Johnson, 30. Movies Mustafa, 31. Donwick Pullen, uh, 32. Tyler Dupree, 33. Jared O'Connor, Terry O'Connor's son, uh, 34. Jack Robert, 35. Wellington Albert, 36. Corey Hall. What do you make of that team um, initially? Initial, looking at it, it was a team that's quite scared me. You know, if you look at the whole, whole FC forward pack, it's a scary pack. Uh, looking at this team when we were putting it out first, it didn't quite scare me. But I think I think they'll be in a better position than they were last season. I don't think they're going to be a top four side, but I think top they'll five. Mm, I think they'll comfortably make mid table and push for upper mid table. I don't think they have to worry anything about relegation or anything like that next season. Uh, it'd be good to see Luke Gale back as well. Uh, obviously spent uh, last year out with injury. It'd be good to see him back in action uh, and leading the way for the Rhinos. Uh, Robert Louis, if he stays, it'd be good to see how them two link up. And Matt Pryor, uh, who's lead, who, you know, some gr- great players have won number 10 at Leeds. Um, so it'd be good, interesting to see how he does from the NRL and what experience he can bring and, and, and see what he does at the Rhinos. Uh, Sam Ball was returned to rugby league with Bradford on a one year deal uh, after completing his four year drugs ban. Uh, so he's joined the Bulls for the 2020 season. He was training with a uh, hometown club Halifax, but he will join the Bulls for 2020. Uh, the 2040 kick, the 2040, yeah, that's right, 2040 kick will be introduced in the NRL uh, in 2020 as part of the new rule changes. Chat about it on site. There's, so, there's too many rules to, to, to go through and mention. We'll go into 2040. It's interesting because n- uh, nobody was asking for a 2040 rule last season. I no. don't think anybody would have put a comment out there, oh, we've got 40-20, why don't we have a 2040? So it's interesting how they've, they've just grasped that and gone, that would be a good idea. And it would be interesting to see if any teams attempt it because... It's a big risk, isn't it? It's, it's take a kick on your own 20. It's, it's interesting. It's risky enough that doing a 40-20 because a lot of times you see 40-20s don't pay off to go out in the full and you're turning over at 40, but at least you've got 40 metres there. If you go for a 2040 and you kick out the full, suddenly you're under pressure. And in the NRL, teams like Melbourne Storm will take that chance and then score past you because you took the risk. So I think uh, if, if I was a coach, I'd be like, well, let's not think about the 2040. You're a, you're a, a half by yourself, Josh. Uh, <laughs> would you like to see the uh, 2040 <laughs> yeah. introduced over here? No, I can't keep to save my life. I would play North, North West Men's League, don't I? So um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be trying it if it was. Um, so, yeah. Yourself, I'm going to talk about yourself. <laughs> you have to that, yeah. I, I, I just, I just have um, no real changes, no real structure changes for as long as we possibly could. Uh, if it was up to me, Josh, I, yeah, if, well, if, 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 if it was up to me, I wouldn't change any rules, any structures because we're losing fans because we change change yeah, stuff many times. I think one, one of the we can't rules, entice new fans if we don't know what's going yeah, on ourselves. Yeah. I think one of the one of the other rules was. Um, attacking kicks or kicks once you're in the air, you, you can't place a hand on them. So if you're so if you're defending and the attacker's got to that ball first, then you, there's nothing you can do to stop that player. There was a rule anyway you can't tackle in the air, but there's nothing you can do once that player is in the air, got that ball. He's, he's bound to score. So it'll be interesting to see how players work that one out and defend against that. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm with you on that one. Why do we have to change rules every year? Because it's we're losing fans. It's hard enough. So like, it's hard enough for me to talk to my my mates about playoffs and you know the simple stuff so to introduce more rules uh, from, from Blackpool so there's not a lot of rugby league background there oh well there was there was a team there at the time but a lot of my friends aren't into rugby league Blackpool uh, Borough like, exactly Blackpool Borough so, the great yeah, Billy yeah, played though he did, he did. Uh, then they had Blackpool uh, Panthers which Josh Charlie wants to play that yeah, uh, yeah. he did uh, but there's, there's no professional club as such in the minute but yeah it's it's, it's Tough to try and get non fans into rugby league because the man Joe was, Ball that comes from Blackpool. He does come from Blackpool. He was with us at Blackpool Stanley the other week with our 24 hour touch rugby game. Name drop. Hey, Josh loves a name <laughs> drop. He's, he's always with his contacts at Swinton. He, he loves it. <laughs> he loves it. Uh, he, yeah, is it Joe, Joe Ball that follows him on Brett Swinton. Brett Whitehead, he used to play. He's our coach. He used to play uh, semi professional uh, at Hamill. Yeah, he did. Uh, I've penned a column as well on why England should uh, stop being so ignorant to the Northern Hemisphere game as well, which uh, has caused a little bit of a stir. But a lot of people seem to be agreeing with me, which uh, I appreciate. Not a lot of people listen to me, not a lot of people agree with me. But I always say that uh, you should listen to me because someday it will p- pay off. 
Hopefully win the league. Hopefully when England actually do decide to play France in France, um, you can say I'll, I can take a little bit of credit. Yeah, and when Lee win the championship. You can take a bit of credit because you've been yeah. asking for that for the past four years. Uh, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I think I think Lee will win the, the championship yeah. next year. The broken clock is right twice a day. And I think um, I think oh you're right there <laughs> you're right there Josh. Uh, and I think we're gonna we'll win um, Super League next year. We won. As long as Jack's nurses is playing though. We're gonna um, lead them up. Yeah, we're we're gonna better double. Like um, to see the odds with uh, partners bet on that one. Yeah. Show to let's not remember the sponsors. Uh, thanks to to Heaven and Health uh, for partnering with us. Um, we we've had a lot of orders coming recently uh, for Heaven and Health. If you want meal preps uh, from just forty pounds uh, to order yours, know that they offer free uh, one to one nutrition advice. If it's for um, bulking up, is it? If it's for for weight loss, if it's for maintaining a healthy lifestyle, for all forty pound. Uh, so they've got Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Type in Heaven and Health, it'll, it'll, it'll come up. Uh, heaven dash N dash Health uk is the website. Go on all your meal preps now. Get it, and you could you could lose weight over Christmas this year instead of uh, instead of gaining weight. Good luck with that. Uh, and also thanks to to Betfred, uh, supplying the the best odds uh, in rugby league and what rugby league has to offer we've got plenty of uh, articles online which give out the championship and super league odds for 2020 make sure to, to go on betfred.com as well as reading all the latest rugby league news on loverugbyleague.com thanks to Josh for being my guest uh, this week uh, until next time uh, we might see you next Thursday or we might not who knows we'll see you then